Solomon's temple, the first temple, Ezra's temple, the second temple, Herod's temple, the second temple. What? Welcome, Catholicos, Catholics, Orthodox Christians, all who seek the truth. Now, this is the story we're told. Solomon's temple was the first temple. Ezra's temple, after they came from Babylon, and the temp first temple was destroyed and was rebuilt, became Ezra's temple or um, Zerubbabel's temple. And then, when Herod completely demolished the second temple and rebuilt his, uh, his temple, for some reason, the delusion is it's still the second temple. And we're waiting for the third temple, the magical third temple, which will usher in, will, will welcome the Messiah. And uh, I'm surprised. I mean, it really annoys, annoys me quite a bit to hear even well-informed uh, scholars still talking about Herod's temple, which as you can see on your screen, that is a model of uh, the temple built by Herod as the second temple. It is not the second temple, it is the third temple. There is no futuristic third temple. Uh, if there is uh, anything so, such as that built, it'll be a completely fake temple with a fake priesthood and a fake sacrifices. There are no more Jewish priests. Nobody can 100% trace their lineage to Aaron. And there are definitely no Levites, Levites, who get, there is no genetic um, um, similarity in them. And um, so, and that is the point of this video. I'm going to go quickly from what, not what I say, what Jews themselves say, what the Jewish Encyclopedia says, uh, and what Josephus says about the Temple of Herod and why it must be called the Third Temple. Not the Second Temple, not the Second and a Half Temple, it is the Third Temple. So let's start off. So I'm going to start off with, non-biased here, the Jewish Encyclopedia, the unedited full text of the 20, 1906 Jewish Encyclopedia. What does it say? And the problem with this third temple theory is a lot of there's the Christian Zionism and all these people trying to rebuild the temple. We got to rebuild the temple of Ezekiel. We got to rebuild it so the Messiah will come. Well, if that happens, it'll probably will be welcoming the false Messiah if that ever happens, because it'll be a false temple anyways. So let's go with the Jewish encyclopedia. In the 18th year, so... 18th year, so 20 to 19 BC, in the reign of Herod. In his reign, Herod, what did Herod do? He rebuilt the temple on a more magnif magnificent scale. He didn't just expand an existing temple. So if the temple was there, you have a house. And you know what, say, you know what, I, I want to add a sunroom. I want to maybe add an extra level. Maybe I want to add a garage. So it's still the same house is just an expanded house so it will still be the same house but if I take that house and tore it tear it completely down to the foundation and rebuild it it's no longer the same house it'll be a completely new house and that is exactly what Harold Herod did and we will see so again in the 18th year so between 1920 BC and the reign of of his reign Herod rebuilt the temple on a more magnificent scale so the Jews were loath, so they were afraid to have their temple pulled down. It's not expanded, it was not renovated, they didn't want it to be pulled down, fearing lest it might not be, what, rebuilt. I mean, how smart do you need to be to see what we're talking about here? It's not the second temple. The temple was pulled down, torn down, and rebuilt. Um, so what did Herod do? He, he said, so he got all the materials for the new temple before, so the new building, not in the same old building, he brought all the materials for the new building before the old one was what? Taken down. 
taken down. And he employed at the temple to build it a thousand priests. He, uh, they became masons and carpenters. So the dimensions, so he says here, the temple proper w as what? Reconstructed, rebuilt by Herod was of the same dimensions as that of Solomon. Goes through a bit of stuff. At the entrance of the out, oh, this one, this is an aside because I mentioned it in my first video on the Latin Mass, Latin Mass explained part one. Here it is. At the entrance of the outer temple hung a veil, embroidered. The outer temple, so at the entrance of the outer temple there was a, a, a hung a veil. The outer temple itself was separated from the Holy of Holies by a similar curtain. And that is the tradition of the Catholic Church, of the churches of the East, of all the ancient history. That's even up to now, you see the veil. There is a curtain in the Armenian rite, in the Coptic rite, and Ethiopic rite, where the priests go behind the curtains into the Holy of Holies. And actually, there were two veils. So, in the you've got to watch my first volume on, on the Latin massive structure of the church, because the, our churches were built based upon the temple. There was a separation, a first veil or a root screen between the people, the entrance of the temple proper and the holies, and then between the holies and the holy of holies, which is the high altar, there was a second veil and more steps to go up. Our churches are based on the temple. Let's continue. That's just an aside. I wanted to point it out. Um, so this is from the Jewish Encyclopedia of 1906, which says, it was a brand new building, the old one was torn down, it was reconstructed, and so forth. Let's not just stick with one source. Let's go to another source, another Jewish source. Aish.com, Aish HaTorah, Israel programs. So, um, here's the title of the article, A Madman who murdered his own family and many rabbis, Herod was the, also the greatest builder in Jewish history. So it says, Herod reigned, again, this is just as an aside, I found it kind of interesting, Herod, will, uh, Herod reigned as king of Judea. And that is as, again, another aside, when uh, in the scriptures we see that Je the Jews wanted to kill Jesus, or Jesus, uh, or uh, similar effects like the, the um, so I mean he's because at that time of Jesus Judea that's where Judeos that is where the word Jews comes from because he would go to Galilee which now we'd say oh they're all Jews no Galilee were the Galileans and these were the Judeans so it's different parts of the land uh, governed by the Romans at the time so but anyways, as an interesting aside, he died in 4 BC when Christ was born, so just before Christ, uh, after Christ was born, and he reigned 33 years, the same length of the life of Christ himself. I just found it interesting. Same thing with um, um, uh, um, Alexander the, the Great, again, lived only 33 years, and of course Christ. So Herod's Temple, again, this is from uh, Aish.com, it's a whole Jewish uh, website, Herod's Temple. The most ambitious of Herod's projects, because he built a lot of things, was the rebuilding, not expansion, not decoration, not beautification, but rebuilding of the temple. And uh, he, when it came to building the temple, itself on top of this platform again actually he raised the ground and he made, built a brand new platform a brand new foundation all right so it wasn't like he just expanded on the existing building no he tore everything down on top of this platform herod truly outdid himself and even the talmud acknowledges that the end result was spectacular he who has not seen herod's building has never in his life seen a truly grand building the Holy of Holies was covered with gold, the walls and columns and outer buildings with white marble, and so forth. And there's a description from Josephus. I will place these links for you as well. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a couple. Yeah, why not? I'll place the links so you can read the whole articles yourselves. Um, having built the temple, he didn't just expand it. He didn't decorate it. 
Hera took pains to make sure that it would uh, be run without future problems of this kind because there was a bit of a, an incident. What did Herod do? He appointed his own high priest. So actually in Eusebius, the history of the church, he gives you prophecies of the of the arrival of the Messiah. How did we know? There are different, different prophecies. There are prophecies of Daniel. There was the prophecies of like uh, Israel will no longer have a, uh, a Jew ruling them. And Herod was not a Jew. He was half Jewish, half Arab, or half another nationality. So he was not a pure Jew. And again, there is a description about the priesthood being dissolved because he starts appointing his own priests and, and takes over basically the temple um, administration. So, um, yeah, yeah, he, his interference with the temple hierarchy. So this is again from this uh, little website. So he rebuilt the temple. He rebuilt the temple. So another website called uh, Jewish Magazine Again, it has Ezra's temple, Herod's temple, Ezekiel's vision, um, third temple. So again, you'll see the insanity, a, a little statement, which is, I found it completely insane, but we're going to see it when we come to it. To set the record straight. That's from Jewish magazine. There were, <laughs> see, this is the insane one. There were two second temples. Two second temples, because they don't want to say that Herod's temple was the third temple. So when I tear everything, I tear the whole house down. I even rip out the foundation, put a brand new foundation, and put a brand new building on top of it. Am I going to call it, it's still the same old house? No, it's a brand new house. So there were no two second temples. There is the first temple of Solomon, the second temple of Ezra, the third temple of Herod. So let's ignore, let's, that's, I just wanted to highlight this one. There was two second temples, uh, unless you can't count, there would be two second temples. The first one was built 70 years, so the second temple, after the destruction of Solomon's original temple. This second temple stood for 332 years. Then, listen to what they say, then was removed and rebuilt by Herod. So this second temple was removed and rebuilt by Herod. So how can it be still the second temple? It can't. Anyone with a, you know, a bit of logic in their heads would understand that. Um, and then again, uh, just a little commentary from them. It says, uh, so, dif so different from each other were these two temples. So how can you call it still the second temple? You can't. That the Mid Midrash, Numbers, Rabbah 14, assigns different sacrifices to their essence. The original second temple built by Zerubbabel, governor of Judea under the direction of Ezra and King Darius of Persia, is represented by a ram as a burnt offering. The, built, the rebuilt second temple. So the rebuilt second temple it makes it the third temple. <laughs> Come on. Erected by Herod is represented by a goat as a sin offering. It says here the Talmud treats two, the, the two temples as one, as part of their confusion. Um, few people, oh, well, few, again, that's kind of an interesting thing. A few people realize that the miracle of Hanukkah took place in Ezra's temple, not Herod's. Because the Maccabees vanquished the Greeks and rededicated Ezra's temple in 163 BC, 145 years before Herod's temple was built. Because it's a new temple. It was completely redone. Um, and actually there's a difference in height. Between Ezra temple was 60 cubits high, high. Herod's temple was 100 cubits high. Again, Again, a re-emphasize from them, not from me. I'm not saying that. Here it is. It says, this temple, as it was said in the Jewish Encyclopedia, this temple of Herod was no simple beautification project. Herod removed Ezra's temple stone by stone, right down to the ground, and then removed the foundation removed the foundations, and built an entirely new temple of his own. 
So how can you still call it the second temple? It's not the second temple. It's the third temple. And again, this is just an interesting thing. I'm going to read it for you. After Herod's temple stood for 30 years, the red string that miraculously turned white on Yom Kippur to show that God had forgiven the Jewish people stopped turning white. Around the same time, the Kohanim, Kohanim priests, uh, in Arabic would be Kahana, stopped blessing the congregation with God's four-letter uh, name pronounced as spelled. Then havoc began to sweep through the temple. The high priest's office became a political job sold by the Roman overseers. That's what uh, Eusebius talks about as a precursor for the coming of the Messiah. It was prophesied. Um, to, so the priesthood is gone, the, the, the kingdom is gone. No Jew is governing and the priesthood became a political job. It was no longer the, the rightful son of Aaron being in the high priesthood. So the high priest office became political job and by the sold by the Roman overseers to whoever would pay the price. 50 high priests in a row failed to make it through Yom Kippur. Some say they died one after the other in the Holy of Holies because they were unworthy to enter. Others say each one was simply replaced by another who was willing to pay more for a job. Again, this shows if this is true, if this miracle stopped happening, again, because they put it, there were no longer a, 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 a Hebrew, a Jew ruling in the land of Israel, and the priesthood was basically on the wane of being eliminated, and the temple to be destroyed, and the coming of the true Messiah was coming, who was going to give us his uh, eternal temple and his eternal priesthood of the in the order of Melchizedek. Again, in the same article, Herod rebuilt the second temple for his own glory and, for, and no other. And the proof of this is that he continued murdering sages till the very day of his death when he had two great sages and 40 of their disciples burnt at the stake for removing from the temple sanctuary a golden statue of an eagle glorifying Rome. So, this is from Jewish Magazine. Again, telling us Herod removed even the foundations of Ezra's temple, of the second temple, and completely put a brand new foundation, a brand new building. And therefore, it is no not the second temple and cannot be the second temple. It is the third temple. One, two, three. A three-year-old could count. Solomon, Ezra, Herod. Brand new building, brand new building, brand new building. How, how complicated is that? Finally, we're going to go into a, a Josephus in his Antiquities of the Jews. He was a Jewish historian. So in book 15, history of the Jews and I'll place a link for this one as well so you can go over it yourself so I'm gonna go right down again he goes a, a lot of description of the inside of the temple and what it looked like blah, blah, blah. but uh, we're not gonna do that all we care about is I think it's a chapter 10 here where is it chapter 11 yeah maybe chapter 11 so how Herod rebuilt the temple he didn't expand it he didn't make it prettier. He didn't add a, a solarium. No, he rebuilt the temple and raised it higher and made it more magnificent than it was before. All right. And now Herod, in the 18th year of his reign and after the acts already mentioned, undertook a very great work. That is, what's his great work? To build of himself the temple of God. He completely built it make a, and make it larger and compass and to raise it to a most magnificent altitude. Um, so, here. So again, he talks the same incident reported in the Jewish Encyclopedia, which I quoted at the beginning. So, uh, again, because Herod was no friend of the Jews, so he was pretty persecuted, a lot of them. So, uh, so they were, when he told them, look, I'm going to, I'm going to tear down your temple and give you a new one, much be more beautiful one. 
So they were panicking, like he's going to tear down our temple. So they were afraid that he would pull down the whole edifice, which he did, and not be able to bring it to, to not be able to bring it to bring his intentions to perfection for its what rebuilding the, 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 and this danger appeared to them to be very great and the vastness of the undertaking to be such that they could hardly that as could to be such as could hardly be accomplished but while they were in his disposition the king encouraged them and told them so Herod told them he would not pull down their temple till all things were gotten ready for building it up entirely again and that's exactly what he did so he actually got all the supplies before he the the wood and the stone and everything he got it ready for huge amounts for the reconstruction of the temple and he got 10,000 skilled workers and everybody everything is ready to go and then so Herod took away the old foundations and laid others and erected the temple upon them so he tore down the whole temple not only that, he didn't keep the, even the foundation. He removed the old foundations and put new ones, laid others, and then erected the temple upon them. Solomon's temple, Ezra's temple, Herod's temple, the third temple. And he gives you some dimensions. Now the temple was built of stones that were white and strong. And that's... that's uh, all I'm going to report from uh, from Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, Book 15. Uh, so we can see from these documents from Jewish sources, clearly stating the temple, the second temple of Ezra, was torn down. Stone by stone was removed. The very foundations was ripped out. Brand new foundations were put. And a brand new temple was built upon the brand new foundations. That makes Herod's temple the third temple. Not the second. So stop this with Christian Zionism and Jews talking about the second temple. The se we need the third temple, the third temple. The third temple has already come and been destroyed it's done um, and of course they always talk about um, Ezekiel's prophecy now we're gonna finish up quickly with these ones because and actually Ezekiel's prophecy I only I need to buy st. Jerome's uh, commentary on the book of Ezekiel it's like 700 pages on just the book of Ezekiel to see how he explains everything in it but again in Ezekiel's prophecy quickies in chapter 8, he says in verse 4, and, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there in this temple. And it was there according to the vision which I had in the plain. And he said to me, so we see that the glory of God, of the God of Israel, speaks. He is the glory of God. So the glory of the God of Israel, he said to me. We see the distinction between the God of Israel and His glory, the Son of God and God the Father. And, and uh, John 1, chapter 1, verse um, 14, he says about Jesus Christ, and we saw His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And as Ezekiel continues in chapter 43, and behold, the glory, again, I'm bringing Ezekiel, why? Because this is the, the, the book in the Holy Scriptures where those claiming the third temple, the prophesied third temple, we're going to rebuild the third temple. It's already been done. Anyways, and behold, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came in by the way of the east. And Jesus Christ is called the east, the orient. 
He went up, even when ascended into heaven towards the east, and he will come from the east. He came in the way of the east. And his voice, listen to this verse, and his voice. So the glory of God, the glory of the God of Israel, again, the glory of the God of Israel, his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth, the earth shone with his majesty. And uh, I bring this up because, again, this is the glory of the God of Israel who will be in the temple. And he was in the temple. And in the book of Revelation, the book of Apocalypse, chapter 1, um, chapter 1, verse 13, John the Apostle sees, And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like, the son of, like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to his feet, and girt about uh, the past with a golden girdle. And his hair was white and white as wool and as snow, and his eyes were as flaming fire. And his feet were like unto fine brass, as in a burning furnace. And his voice, as the voice, his voice as the sound of many waters, repeating Ezekiel, the glory of the uh, the, the glory of the God of Israel, had a voice, and his voice, the noise of many, his voice was like the noise of many waters which St. Uh, John sees in the Apocalypse, his voice as the sound of many waters, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the glory of the God of Israel. And when I had seen him, I fell, John says, I fell at his feet as dead. So he fell down. He said, Jesus said, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and, and alive and was dead, and behold, I am living forever and ever, and have the king keys of death and of hell. Uh, back to Ezekiel chapter 44. Again, this is because of the third temple. And he brought me back to the way, to the way of the gate of the outer sanctuary of the temple, which looked towards the east. The Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered by it. So, so this gate, which looks towards the east, the Lord, the God of Israel, entered in by it. So the glory of the, the, the glory of the God of Israel entered the temple. And at the same time, this glory of God is the Lord God of Israel who entered by it. And who was in the temple? Jesus Christ, the God made man. I saw and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell on my face, which is exactly what John says. I fell at his feet as dead. I fell on my face and the Lord said to me. We see again, the glory of the Lord, of, the glory of the Lord is himself the Lord. And we see the Lord, the God of Israel himself entered the temple. When did that happen? God himself, Jesus Christ, came and entered his temple. Uh, almost done. And this is from Zechariah. Again, because we have see, and, and, thou sh and thou shalt speak to him, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, not a man, but the man. Behold the man. Vir, ekche vir. Behold the man. The Orient is his name. The Orient, the East is his name. And under him shall he spring up and shall build a temple to the Lord. And this one is the correct translation. The East is his name, which is the, the translation of the Jews themselves in the Septuagint of this verse. They call him the East. And that's how the Eastern Orthodox, the Christians, the first Christians, we all quoted him, the East. There is the 6th century Mas or 7th century Masoretic text, or 9th century Masoretic text, changes that to the branch. His name is the branch, which is a false translation because it's 800 years, 900 years, 1,000 years after the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls. So his name is, the East is his name. He, yea, he shall build a temple to the Lord. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And 
And again from Psalm 109, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. God himself, the Ancient of Days, we have the Son of Man, will be sitting at his right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. With thee is the principality in the day of thy strength and the brightness of the saints from the womb before the day star. The day star again is I begot thee. So from the womb I begot thee. I give birth to thee before this day star. The day star is the uh, the, the sunrise before the the... Yeah, the sunrise before the morning. The day again before the day start. Again, where does the sun rise from? The east. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This priest who was begotten before the beginning of time, before the east, before the day star. And um In uh, Daniel chapter 7, I beheld thrones, I beheld till thrones, not one throne, thrones, more than one, so it would be two, at least two, were placed, and the Ancient of Days sat. His garment was white as snow, and his and the hair of his head like clean wool. His throne, like flames of fire, the wheels of of it like a burning fire. The Ancient of Days is God the Father. I beheld therefore the vision of the of the night, and lo, one like to the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. So this is when Jesus himself ascended into heaven, because he ascended, as you read in the Acts, he ascended in the clouds to the east in heaven, to heaven. And now we see his entrance into heaven. When the word now bringing the second person of eternity, bringing his flesh, who became flesh, up to the heavenly realms. So I therefore beheld the vision of the night, and lo, one like to the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and he came even to the Ancient of Days, to God the Father. And they presented him before him. And we remember St. Stephen, when he was being crucified, uh, stoned, he was saying, I, be, I see Jesus, I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of, uh, of the glory of God or in the right hand of the Father something to this effect and he gave the ancient of days God the Father he gave him power and glory and a kingdom and all peoples tribes and tongues shall serve him his power is an everlasting power that shall not be taken away and his kingdom shall and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. This verse is really very, very important for us these times. His kingdom, the kingdom of the Son of Man, the kingdom of Christ Jesus, God incarnate, his kingdom is his church. The church, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, is the kingdom of Christ. He is the king of the church. His kingdom shall not be destroyed. So even if we have somebody, a hierarchy which is attempting to destroy the kingdom of Christ, it will not succeed. The kingdom of Christ, that's why Jesus says, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, against his kingdom, because his kingdom shall not be destroyed. And as I said previously, even if they attempt to build a, a, a temple, there are no more priests. There, nobody can. Moses defined that the priest has to be a son of Aaron, and I believe as well that the each tribe had to marry within that own tribe. Even intermarriage between different tribes was forbidden. Who can prove that he is a son of Aaron, married to a woman from the tribe of Levi? Nobody. And the lev even though they claim there's some kind of genetic 80 or 70% of those with the name of Cohen have some genetic similarities, so we can assume they came from the same father, but that's not good enough. And, uh, and, the, and only the Levites were allowed to serve in the temple with the, with the priests, the Cohen. And, they, they, and these people who claim to have found DNA evidence they, they say there is zero similarity with all these people, Levi and Levi, and uh, there is no, they might have the name, but there is no, so apparently they are completely 
um, disappeared. And furthermore, the Messiah, even up to now, the Jews, or the, those who still believe in the Torah, claim that the Messiah is the son of David. We have Jesus proved from his ancestor to be the son of David. And there is no contradiction in the, in the um, what do you call it, the, uh, the genealogy of Jesus. Eusebius actually has a very good explanation of the, of the different genealogies. And, uh, but I'm not going to go through that now. But Jesus is proved. Now, 2,000 years after Jesus, suppose a man shows up and says, I am the Messiah. I am the son of David. Can you prove it? Can you go show us who your father and father's fathers and father's father up to King David? Can anybody prove that anymore? They can't. So the priesthood is gone. Their so-called Messiah, which they still await as the son of David, cannot be proved to be the son of David. Um, the temple has been destroyed. And this, the temple of, of Herod, as I said previously, is the third temple. There is no second temple. The second temple was destroyed by Herod, removed stone by stone. Even the foundation was removed to build the third temple, which the glory of the God of Israel himself came into. Jesus Christ himself entered into the Holy of Holies, into the temple itself, into the temple precinct. He purified it from those who sold and traded and desecrated the, the house of his father, the house of the God of Israel. So the glory of the God of Israel purified the house of the God of Israel. So this is it. This is what I wanted to do because it really annoys me to hear on radio, to hear on television, to read even in scholarly books talking about the temple of Herod as the second temple. It is not the second temple temple it is the third temple that's it that's all i hope you enjoyed this video please like share subscribe spread the word watch some of my other videos watch my first video on the latin mass because the, the church was built according to the design of the temple not the upper room but the temple of sacrifice we have the true priesthood we have the true temple we have the true sacrifice that's it. That's all. Hope you enjoy your days. Please like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next time.